if you want to get started. Yeah, I mean, I'll be very quick. My Well, now I have no idea if I'm on the camera or not. Yes, so, <laughs> no. Okay, yeah. Thank you all for coming here, if you feel. Thank you all for waking up early there in Berkeley. Very happy to kickstart day four of our workshop, day three of the, the Mirror Workshop here. And we're starting, I'm very excited about this, this first talk. We're starting with the survey on average case hardness and proof complexity by Susanna Resend. Who's coming to us from the Czech uh, Academy of Sciences? So, the floor is all yours. Oh, yeah, thanks. Thanks a lot for inviting me to this workshop. I've been learning a lot. And yeah, so um, Sam suggested I talked about average case hardness and proof complexity. So, this is going to be more of a survey talk. Uh, and I have to say, it's going to be a very biased survey talk. So, please feel free to let me know if I left anything out that you should have think should have been in or if it forgot to cite something. Um, okay, so I decided to start with a problem which I think you all know very well, which is the plant to click problem. So yeah, we have two distributions, just a random graph. And the other one is a random graph with a plant to click, so a click of size k. And well, we know that, uh, so here I'm using omega g to denote the size of the largest click. And we know that in a random graph, when we're sampling edges with probability a half, that's going to be more or less uh, two log n. Um, so there's a brute force algorithm that can prove that g has no click of size uh, larger than the click number. And it runs in time n to the click number, basically. So it, it looks at every set of vertices, let's say one larger than the click number and checks whether that is a click, it's, it's not. So then in time into the um, click number plus one, it can check that, that there's no click of larger size. And the, well, the plan to click problem is, is, is does there exist an algorithm that distinguishes between both distributions in polynomial time? And this uh, will depend on what k we choose, right? Whether we know of such an existence or not. But we could also ask the question, does there exist an algorithm that proves that g has no click or uh, no k-click for some value of k? So in polynomial time. So we know that for large enough k, there does exist some of this, such algorithms, but what about for some other smaller k? And these are, Two very related questions. They're not exactly the same, but they're very related. And it's um, actually many results for planted click. They say they're solving planted click. They're actually uh, dealing with this uh, uh, question of the, the refutation problem. Can I refute the fact that G does not have a large click? And uh, I think it's um, believe that these might have this very close or the same uh, complexity. Um, okay, so uh, for this talk, I'll be focusing on the, the refutation question. So we'll only be looking at, here we have random graphs, and we're supposed to prove that they don't have a very large click. Um, so we have this question, does there exist an algorithm that proves that there's no k-click in polynomial time? And then another question, which perhaps comes prior to this is, does there exist a proof in polynomial size? There is no proof of polynomial size. There can't be an algorithm that proves it in polynomial time. So this is precisely in proof complexity what we're looking for. Uh, so if we were to think of these, uh, the values of k for which we know there is an uh, algorithm that actually can find uh, clicks, we know that for larger, large enough k, this is uh, easy. For uh, too small value of k, it's impossible. Um, and somewhere in the middle, it's believed to be, well, perhaps it's algorithmically hard. We don't know any, any uh, algorithm. And we could also think of the proof complexity threshold. Uh, so definitely if it's, if it's um, algorithmically easy, it's also provably easy, but then it might be the case that there's actually a threshold in between. 
Um, we this is something we don't know. It could also be that it just coincides with with the, the algorithmic threshold. And just perhaps an example to show per, how perhaps proofs could be. Um, so this is this is not a true example, but let me try to see if I can um, at least pretend. So uh, suppose I want to prove that this this graph does not have a uh, four click. So uh, I could present you with the three coloring of the graph. So that's a uh, proof and it's a very short proof that it doesn't have a four click. Um, but three colorings are hard to find. So maybe algorithmically this would be a hard proof to find but actually the proof itself is, is small. Okay, so the reason this you might have noticed, the reason this is not a, an example of, of a separation between these algorithmic and the, the proof problem is that we can just compute the theta function, which is in between the coloring and the click number. And, um, and this will already give me a, a proof that there is no click of size four. So, so algorithmically, if the, if the graph is three color goal, I can algorithmically prove that there's no click of size four. Okay, are there any questions? Okay. So um, for now I'm gonna, uh, well, mostly focus on what happens if you just choose K to be one larger than the click number of the graph. Okay, so this would be like down here. Can we show that uh, it's, it's hard, very close to the impossible uh, threshold? Okay, and the results will mostly work for, for larger values of K, but mm, just not to get into the exact parameters, we can just focus on the hardest possible case. What can we, what can we prove in this scenario? Sorry, I do have a yeah. Could you say that the chromatic example again? So you said if there is a color? Uh, right. So if there is a three coloring of the graph, there can't be any four click there. There's a. Uh, ah, okay. Yeah. So, so that would be a proof there is no four click, but I can also prove it by computing the theta, uh, the Lovash theta function. Can we prove for the smaller uh, like uh, sizes that uh, it's impossible to do that? Therefore, it will be hard. Uh, again, sorry. Uh, for the smaller k, is it known that it's probably hard or not? Uh, for k, is it impossible or not? Oh, so, smaller than uh, two. Oh, so I'm I'm saying impossible because there there is going to be a click of size uh, two log n. Oh, so I can't n. prove that there is no click of two log n. Oh, okay. That's why I'm saying impossible. Yeah. Yeah. So the question is just a little bit above this. Is it really hard? Okay, so to formalize this, um, we can define a formula, which is going to state that uh, G has a K click. So it is, you get a graph, you get a value K, and then you can write a formula that says that click has, that G has a K click. And then if you prove this formula is unsatisfiable, you're proving the, group, the graph has no K click. So this is the formula. Um, so it has, uh, these variables x, v, i. So the meaning is that vertex v is the ith member of a click. So i ranges from one to k. Uh, so every vertex has the potential of being either the first, the second, or the k vertex of the click. And then there are three types of uh, clauses. So there's one clause that's saying that, uh, well, there, there exists k click members. So for each uh, value in K, it's saying that there is some vertex that is the ith click member. Then there are clauses saying that uh, a vertex can only be once in a click. It can't be the ith and the uh, i prime uh, member of the click. And finally, there are, are clauses saying that if, if um, we have two vertices that are not an edge, then uh, these two vertices cannot be in the click. So there has to be an edge between vertices in the click. 
So the question is, can we actually prove a lower bound in the size of a, of a refutation of, of this formula? Uh, or can we show that the brute force, so this is the kind of lower bound we would like to show, showing that uh, the brute force is, is actually the optimal. And, and actually we don't have many candidate graphs for, for proving this. Like what, what would be a hard graph? The only natural candidate graphs um, that I know of are just random graphs. When you choose P to be close to the threshold of, of having a click, so a little bit below so that there's no click. Why, why P so close to the click threshold? I mean, I mean, we, for algorithms, we think GN half even is a hard distribution for K, you know, much, uh, much less than half. Right, right. Yes, no, it could be, it could be uh, not necessarily so close. I was just saying close because that's the uh, easiest possible uh, lower bound we can prove. So, so in this sense of like focusing on, on the, the easiest possible case of proving lower bound. So, okay, the, the hardest possible problem. Okay, thanks. The hardest possible problem would be when P is close to the k click threshold. Does that make sense? Okay, one, one more question about that. Um, is there, has there been any work on trying to do this kind of thing for uh, maybe Paley graphs or these kind of number theoretic constructions where there are some, I think, even open questions about what the clique number is? Um, I, the only uh, work I know in that sense is for Ramsey graphs. So there's a, a work on, yeah, how hard it is to prove that a graph is Ramsey, but that's the only one I know. And perhaps the reason, yeah, I'm not sure. So this, the, the problem here is already, there's not um, that much known. So I'll, sh I'll get to what's known. So perhaps these problems might be harder. I'm not sure. Okay, and what you're saying is that the same thing as kind of the in encoding the statement of Ramsey's theorem in, uh, a formula and and proofs of that or something yeah yeah, yeah. so there's yeah. one result yeah. of that mm -hmm. uh yeah um i'm not sure i think it's only for for tree-like resolution or for a very weak proof system thank you um one question will someone monitor the chat or should i open it here okay I don't know how to, uh, how to I can leave it there. Yeah. Okay. So, okay. So um, another question is uh, what are other candidate hard formulas? So we, uh, we saw that the click formula is a candidate hard formula when you have a random graph. And so another very natural um, average, also average case hard formula would be a uh, random case set. And here, yeah, there are different ways of defining uh, the distribution of how you'll sample the instance, but it doesn't, um, well, for our pur purposes, it doesn't matter too much. Um, and an important uh, concept here that's used when we're talking about um, random case at well in general when, when we have some formula is this uh, clause variable incidence graph. So we have on, on one side, we have the clauses of the formula. On the other side, we have the variables and we add an edge if the clause contains the variable. And here we don't really care about the, the signs, like if, if a variable appears negated or not, that doesn't really matter. We just add an edge. And this is very related to another formula, which is the random X, XOR. So instead of having a clause, we just, we either have um, a constraint saying that the XOR of X, Y, and Z is zero or X, Y, and Z is, is one. And this is an easy formula uh, to refute because we can do Gaussian elimination and, and it's actually easy. But it's, it's very related in the sense that uh, well, depending exactly how you choose the distribution, these cost variable incidence graphs will actually uh, be the same 
or at least they're very related. And of course, if we're working with, um, with CNF formulas, we will have to rewrite this. So for example, this constraint would become these four clauses. So just some technicality. Okay, and I'd like to talk about a third um, problem, which is the, the K coloring. So it's, it's quite different from k cliff because it's NP hard already for k equals three. And, uh, and you'll see there also the results now are, are also quite different. Um, so, so here again, we have this variable XVI, which means that vertex V is colored with the color I. And then you have uh, causes saying that every vertex has a color. Uh, every vertex has only one color and that neighbors don't have the same color. And again, our natural uh, hard candidates would be uh, random graphs where we choose P close to the threshold. Okay, so some reasons for studying average case uh, uh, complexity, proof com average case hardness and proof complexity. So, um, well, one, Reason is that it's proving actually something stronger, right? You're actually proving that almost all graphs are hard. So it's a, it's a stronger statement. But also they're not, uh, if we in proof complexity, we want uh, to prove lower bounds for different proof systems. And there are actually not so many uh, natural candidates for that. So uh, these random formulas or formulas on random graphs are, are actually good candidates for proving lower bounds for stronger proof systems. So many of the lower bounds we know to pro know how to prove are for our easy uh, formulas like pigeonhole principle or Satan or the click coloring principle that says that a K minus one colorable graph does not contain a K click. So these are all statements that are actually have small proofs and strong enough proof systems. And so in this talk, I'll just focus on those three uh, problems that are hard because there are also average case results about easy um, problems, but I'll just focus on those three. Uh, and of course, uh, I think these formulas um, are interesting on their own, so. Okay, so yep. here you're picking the, the random distribution that you believe is the hardest for the problem. Yes, yes, exactly, exactly. So that can we prove a lower ground at least for that? And then how far can we, can we Push the lower bounds. But for these things, do we know lower bounds against worst case graphs? We we don't. Uh, for some weak proof systems, we we might like tree-like resolution. Uh, but uh, for for others, we don't have good candidates for proving these these worst case lower bounds. Does so, it have to do with just saying the problem is not in Cohen P, or is this, or is this not related? Uh, the worst case, I'm the, saying something about coincidence. Yeah, so if you could prove that that worst case, uh, a, a low, worst case lower bound for all proof systems, then you will be proving that NP different from coin P. Ah, okay. So it's definitely, yeah, related to that. Yeah, but there are, there, well, okay, I'll, I'll get back to this, to, to your question soon. Okay, so I've been talking about proof systems and so let me, at least define some proof systems so you know more concretely what I'm talking about. Um, so these are some proof systems I'll talk about. I won't talk about the gate, but that's a very uh, strong uh, proof system for which we don't know how to prove any lower bounds. And, and then there are these proof systems for which we do know how to prove some, some lower bounds. And this arrow means that the, the one above is stronger than the one below. So it has more succinct proofs. Um, and here, uh, polynomial calculus, we'll see it's defined over uh, any field and some of squares is stronger only over the reals. Okay, so resolution. Um, so it's a very basic proof system. There's only one rule, which is the, the resolution rule or the cut rule. If you have a clause C or X and the clause D or not X, you can derive the clause C or D. Uh, and then using this, you want to start with the, your KCMF formula and derive contradiction, derive the empty clause. So this is an example of a, 
resolution proof. So here, for example, we resolved over the x variable, and then we get this clause y or z. Why or not z? And then there's like two measures that we care about. Uh, well, what we care most about is the size of the proof. And that's just the number of clauses. And another measure that's important is the, the width uh, of the proof, which is the maximum number of literals appearing in any clause. And the reason that it's important is, well, two reasons. One, uh, there, we can uh, find, if there is a, a proof of small width, we can actually find such a proof in time uh, and to the W and to the size of the small width. So it's, it's kind of like, well, if you, I'll get to sum of squares later, but also if you have degree D, then you do N to the D. And, and the other reason is that if you have a strong enough width lower bound, so if you think of width being like linear in N, then you also get a, a size lower bound. And uh, finally, we say that the proof is tree-like if the, if the bag is actually a tree. So for example, this would be a tree-like resolution reputation. So it's a, a weaker proof system. Okay, then we have um, polynomial calculus and cutting planes. So the exact details are not very important for this talk. So I'm gonna go a bit uh, fast. Don't worry if you don't get exactly the details, but you, you transform these, these clauses in the case of polynomial calculus into some polynomial such that this polynomial is satisfied if and only if uh, the clause is satisfied. So here, this polynomial is, is equal to zero, either if x is one, y is zero, or z is one. And then for um, the other, uh, here we're transforming the clause into an inequality. So we're saying that either, uh, so this inequality has to be larger than one, which means that either x is one, y is zero, or z is one. And then there are some rules. So there's some uh, Boolean axiom for, uh, enforcing that the variables are zero one. Uh, you can take linear combination of polynomials. So this is some sound rule over uh, whatever field you're working in. You can multiply by a variable and the refutation is if you derive some contradictory statement, one equals zero. And again, we have proof size, which is the number of monomials in the proof uh, when you expand things out and the proof degree is the maximum degree of any polynomial appearing in the proof. Yeah. So, and you have squares being bigger equal than zero? You have? Like sum of squares being bigger equal than zero in this left hand side? Sum of squares? Like if I have polynomial square that they need to be positive. Right. No, no, this you don't have here. No, oh, Okay. no. So you only have these rules. You don't have sum of squares rules, yeah. And here for, for cutting planes, it's similar. You have these um, constraints on uh, each variable. You have linear combinations. And, and then the special thing is you have this division rule, which only holds over integer values. So this is what yeah, actually uh, allows you to do more than just the linear program. You're actually working with integers. And yeah, and the derivation that you derive might Mm, uh, reputation if you derive minus one is greater than zero. And here the proof size, the number of inequalities in the proof, and we don't have an, uh, something analogous to degree here because everything are, is just uh, linear inequalities. So, yeah. Okay, and finally sum of squares, which you probably um, know very well. So, um, so sum of squares can be also viewed as as a proof system. Um, so again, here you translate the, clause, the clauses, you can, there's these two ways of translating them. Uh, and now suppose you have a set of polynomials. So here P1 through PM, uh, and you have another set Q1 to QL, and these are polynomials which are greater than zero and the P's are equal to zero. So a sum of squares refutation of 
this set of polynomials would be these RS sets such that uh, if this, the sum is equal uh, to minus one and each of the SIs is actually a sum of squares. So the reason this is a refutation, so let's see, uh, if, if there were um, a satisfying assignment for these polynomials, then if I were to plug the satisfying <coughs> assignments in here, uh, all these PSIs would evaluate to zero. So this would evaluate to zero, no matter what the R's are. Uh, the, all the QIs would be positive uh, or not negative. And, and the SIs are non-negative because there are some of squares. So this would have to be non-negative. And so if it's equal to minus one, you're refuting the set of polynomials. And then again, you have definition of size and degree here. So now let's see what are the results known for these uh, proof systems. So here I have um, the left tree like resolution, resolution, polynomial calculus, sum of squares, and cutting planes. And the problems were considering I added three x or. Uh, just to point out that many of the results for uh, random three set that we know, actually they're a consequence of the result for random three x four. So there's uh, Fatal uh, Semerevi from 88, which proved that, um, that, well, it follows from their proof that random three x four is, is hard. Uh, the exact parameters were later improved. And yeah, and I also wanted to point out that it follows from 3XOR because this also says that uh, um, it's, it's following from an easy problem actually. So if you want to generalize this to stronger proof system, something else has to be done. You can't, you can't uh, depend on the hardness of 3XOR. Um, then for polynomial calculus, it was first shown for um, fields characteristic different from two. And, and this is um, also because it was shown for three XOR and three XOR is easy if you're over characteristic two. So, so it was uh, a bit later on that it was also shown for, for this case. And, and then for sum of squares, um, it was also shown for, for random three XOR. And these results of these, these two they actually boil down to uh, saying that whatever sum of squares can do is equivalent to, in terms of degree, it's equivalent to what resolution can do in terms of width. So it's really just uh, boiling down to, to resolution. And then interestingly for cutting planes, um, uh, well, 3XOR is, is a very recent result that it's quasi-polynomially, at least quasi-polynomially easy. Um, and for uh, three sets, we don't, it's open. The only uh, partial results that we have from a few years ago is uh, if you allow for like um, log n variables per cause, then, um, then you can get hardness, but otherwise it's open. And then for K coloring, there's, much less known. So uh, for resolution, we know that it's hard. Um, then for, well, for polynomial calculus here, we only have worst case. Here we do have worst case, but it's actually a reduction to pigeonhole principle. So it's also reducing to an easy problem. Um, so it's not uh, possible to actually generalize this to, for example, some of squares where, where pigeonhole principles is easy. And, uh, and then for sum of squares, um, I think there are a couple more results. This was the, the um, strongest one I found, which is just from this year. So it, it's only for the case um, where you have G and a half. And, and, and what they show is that uh, you need large degrees. So you need degree larger than log n. Uh, so it's not a size lower bound in the, sense that we defined earlier, but it's something towards that. It's a 
degree lower bounds. And then for k click, well, there's, I guess, even less known. So we know it's, if you want exactly the hardness that we expect, which is n to the k, we know it's hard for tree like resolution. But then it's, uh, we don't have the same results for any other proof system. There are some partial results for resolution. And also for sum of squares, we also have degree lower bound for this case when uh, p is a half. Um, yes. So just to go back to the discussion about k, uh -huh. the k go for? Or... Oh, the, the, in the k-click? Yeah. It's an exponent of the lower bounds. So hard means n to the k in this, in, uh, for k-click. That's, that's the um, um, trivial al algorithm runs in time n to the k. But it doesn't depend anymore on where, where k is. Oh, this is so actually, uh, this is supposing k is like very close to, to the click number. So it yeah. should actually be n to the click number. Oh, okay. Um, yeah. And, and what played the role of the click number, for instance, within the free set or the k following? Is there some, what is the parameter there? So it, there, there isn't an analogous because it's for already for, for three sets or three coloring, that's already hard. Like for any, so, so for instance, in the random three set, there is this alpha parameter. So for any alpha, like number of clauses over. Ah, right, right. Yes, yes, exactly. There is this, yes, there's this parameter. So here it appears as this delta, which is you have M clauses and variables. You have this delta factor and it does play a role in what lower bounds you can prove, yes. But for all deltas, it's hard. Um, no, I think, well, for constant deltas, yes. But if you choose delta, like for resolution, if you I think if you choose delta mm, square root n. Oh, wait, I think maybe I wrote it wrong. Maybe it's delta. Yeah. If you, cho if you choose delta square root n, then, then I think it's easy for. Uh, Resolution. If you have uh, n to the one point five plus epsilon, maybe. Okay, so you shall derive it from these exponents. Yeah, you can see that this won't apply for that, and then there, are, I think, yeah, there are results that it's actually easy if you have enough enough clauses. And these other where you don't specify it, it's just that there's like for the polynomial calculus and lower. Um, I'm not exactly sure what, how they depend on delta. There's some. There's some dependence on delta, yes, yes. And definitely like for K, K, uh, coloring, there's also a uh, dependence on, on the probability of choosing an edge. Definitely. Yeah. So, so these, are all, like, these are all for size, unless you said degree, right? They're all for size unless it says degree, exactly. So actually, but but the, okay, this is just some ignorance. So how do you get from degree to size for, I guess, for for uh, for resolution and for SOS, these are all coming from width or degree lower bounds, right? And I guess, do you get to size just by saying that the degree, the width or degree is extremely high and therefore you, it implies a size lower bound? For, for random three set, yes. Um, and even this K coloring result also is, is this uh, very large width. Uh, if I'm not mistaken. And, uh, and for tree, and for tree like, for like the tree like resolution heart, the clique thing is not coming from width. That's like this, really this going is, straight to size somehow. This is not going through width. No, it's because there is actually a width K proof. So, um, yeah, just going through width, you wouldn't be able to get uh, N to the K. So, okay. something I find interesting about the K click problem is that. It really forces you to go beyond just uh, proving with lower bounds. You have to really understand, um, come up with uh, other techniques for proving size lower bounds. Where does the where does the Rossman? Well, I guess the Rossman the Rossman result for click is for circuits. Yeah. Yeah. Okay. 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 Thanks. Yeah. How do you go from width to size? Oh, this is, is the word. Th this is a, a result of uh, a Bezos and Dickerson from two thousand one or. Uh, and it's, it's, it's not hard, it's very neat. Uh, it's showing that if you 
if you have a um, if you have a small width proof, you can actually transform it into a small size proof, or the other way around. Uh, you, whichever if you have a, no the other way if you have a small size proof, uh, you can transform it into a small width proof, um, and you can do this. Uh, in, in some sense for tree-like resolution, it's very, very like tight for resolution. It only works, uh, you don't get such a small width, but you, you get smallish width. Um, so, so yeah, this is, and this is often used in proof complex to prove lower bounds. And you also have the same thing for polynomial calculus and sum of squares, that if you have a uh, large enough degree, if it requires linear degree, you automatically get a size lower bound because of, of a really, and then the proof is a bit more complicated in how you get that. But if, if there is a linear size uh, lower bound, you have a size lower bound, an exponential size lower bound. Uh, but it's only strong enough. So if, if you can prove like a square then uh, lower bound, degree lower bound, that doesn't imply any size lower bounds. But has to be above square root n. Um, I ten more minutes. Uh, five. Okay. Twenty. Okay. Okay. So I now plan to talk a bit about um, how these results are proven and. Uh, a big part of it is finding structure in randomness. So how does this, um, why does randomness imply hardness? So you find some structure and prove that uh, ra a random instance has this structure and that this structure implies hardness. So here's um, um, an example for KSAT. So here, what is, used for, I think, all the, the lower bounds that we know is uh, expansion of the constraint variable graph. So we say a uh, graph is a S epsilon bipartite expander. If you look at any set uh, U of vertices, as long as that set is not too big, the, it has a lot of neighbors. So for example, here, if I choose this set U and I look at the neighbors of the set, it's uh, larger than, than you. And this is interesting because you, this guarantees that you can always find a match between the left side and the right side. So just to get a bit of a feeling of how you can prove lower bounds, at least for, for resolution, I wanted to introduce uh, this game, which is, um, oh yes, here I'm going to use this as an example. So here's a, a pause of, of the, this uh, constraints variable graph. And, and the game, it has two players. It has prover and delayer. Uh, the prover is saying that uh, the formula is unsatisfiable. And the delayer is saying that uh, I know a satisfying assignment for this formula. And the delayer is lying because the formula is un unsatisfiable, but the prover has to actually prove that he's lying. So uh, the game goes as, as follows. So the prover can ask the value of some variable. So for example, okay, if you know a satisfying assignment, then what is the variable, the value of the variable X? And then the delayer will answer something, X equals true. Uh, and then they'll write it down on the roll, the delayer answered X equals true. And then the prover might ask some other variable, what about Z? And the delayer will answer something that equals false. So they write that down. And then the prover asks, uh, what about W? And then the delayer, if the delayer were to answer W equals false, then uh, this assignment, X equals true, Z equals false, and W equals false, would falsify this some cause of the formula. So then the prover would win and the game would be over because she actually proved that uh, the delayer's assignment is not uh, satisfying all causes of the formula. So uh, delayer is smart, so he's actually going to answer W equals true. Okay, so the game has to continue. They write W equals true. 
And then another thing that the prover can also do is maybe there are some questions that were asked that uh, she thinks are not needed anymore. So she can just forget some, just erase uh, something in the record. And uh, this is in order to save space because we'll say that the delayer wins the R game on the formula. If, uh, if we have a scroll with only R lines and prover cannot exhibit a falsified clause. So there's no strategy for prover that can actually catch the layer of falsifying the clause. Uh, and uh, okay, I didn't mention, but if, uh, if the prover erases something, uh, then and asks that again, the delayer can answer something else. It doesn't have to be consistent with previous answers because there's no record of it. So, so this game is used uh, to prove uh, with lower bounds. So if, if the delayer wins the R game on F, then resolution requires with R to refute F. Uh, and then we can actually use the convention. Uh, yeah? What, what does it mean, the delay of winning the R game? It, it means regardless of the question. Regardless of how prover, the questions, the order, the strategy the prover has, uh, if there are only R lines here in the scroll, then uh, the prover cannot catch uh, a contradiction in what delay is saying, in the answers of the delay. And even if they play forever. Even if they play forever. Just know it, yeah, exactly. So, yeah, so for um, random uh, random case sets, the the expansion is what's going to ha help the layer be able to al always find some variable to satisfy the clause, uh, no matter what, as long as there's as long as the the number of uh, questions is small, that will correspond to a small set of, of constraints that are being, um, that contain that variable. And therefore it's possible for the delayer to always uh, keep consistent, uh, locally consistent. So the lower bound actually, yeah, boils down to proving two lemmas that if, uh, if this constraint variable graph is an expander, the layer will win for um, some R, uh, which is going to be, yeah, related to this uh, S of the expansion. And then the other part is saying that, well, if we have a random graph, it's a good expander. This is very, very easy uh, to prove. Okay, so this is just a bit of a flavor of how these lower bounds uh, can be proven. And then for uh, coloring, uh, it's actually a, another um, structure that, that is found. So um, yeah, so here, so we have this graph G, which we're trying to prove is not K colorable. And uh, S is the maximum number such that any uh, subgraph of G with S vertices is K colorable. So here's an example. So here I have this, this graph and it's, it's not uh, three colorable. Um, well, you have to put some color in the middle. So suppose you put, put blue and then it, uh, going around it, you'll see that you have to alternate between two colors and it's an odd cycle. So it's not three colorable. Uh, but if you remove any vertex of this graph, then you have a three colorable graph. So here the S value would be five because any uh, subgraph of five vertices is three colorable. Okay, so this is the S parameter. And then there's this um, uh, beta parameter, which is simply you look at the uh, subgraph and it's the number of uh, vertices with degree between one and K minus one. Okay, so for example, here in this subgraph, uh, it's, these are induced subgraphs. You have uh, beta equals five. For this one, you have beta equals two because uh, you're, you want a degree between one and two. So you only have uh, two vertices. 
And then there's this, well, kind of magic uh, uh, definition of uh, subcritical K expansion. So it's a bit hard to parse. So let me just explain with an example. So here, okay, you're going to take the, the maximum that uh, over some values of T. So let's start fixing with the T equals five. And, and then we look at uh, subgraphs of G, which are connected and have less than five vertices but more than three vertices. So these two are examples. And then I can also take subgraphs. Uh, but these, these are the only two uh, connected subgraphs. Uh, up to isomorphism. And then here, these are the also connected subgraphs. And I can find the beta value of all of these and the smallest one is two. So for t equals five, I'll have this is the smallest beta number. And then also for, uh, we'll do this for uh, t equals four, which we have the same subgraphs, but we have an extra one. And again, we'll get uh, beta equals two, and do this up to t equals two, and this will be actually the for all of them there will be one case with beta equals two, so this will be the value of the, the subcritical expansion in this example. Um, and then again, the lower bound follows from uh, these two lemmas. So uh, the resolution with of refuting this this uh, formula is larger than this expansion value. So that's one, one lemma. And then showing that if you choose a random graph, it's going to be it's going to have large um, subcritical K expansion. It's the same, same kind of uh, strategy for, for coloring, except a more complicated version of, of expansion. And then um, some a bit, um, more details on some of the things that are known for clique. Uh, so again, here we're choosing uh, P close to the K clique threshold. So this is like the hardest possible scenario. Uh, so there is some kind of lower bound for which holds for resolution for very dense graphs. Um, so delta is the average degree. So the average degree has to be uh, almost n, n minus uh, some n to the epsilon. And, and, and also you need large k. But in, at least in some setting, you get some, some lower bound. And it's not of the type n to the k, but it's yeah, some um, lower bound for this random setting. Then also you have some almost two to the K lower bound for resolution when, when K is small. Uh, and then you have this N to the K lower bound, so that like exact right um, lower bound for tree-like resolution. Also for another restriction, which I didn't talk about, uh, restriction of resolution, which is regular resolution. Um, so there you can also get this n to the k lower bound. And then yes, for sum of squares, you can get this log n degree lower bound when you choose uh, probability a half. And it's, as uh, we saw before, so it's open to actually prove this n to the k size lower bound for uh, resolution, polynomial calculus, or sum of squares. Uh, this is yeah something we don't know how to do. So um, perhaps I'll just show this uh, one of the properties that's used for proving uh, click lower bounds, which is it's it's actually very simple. So uh, here, this n half is actually the set of common neighbors of a, of a set of vertices. So for example, here, if we have the set uh, U of vertices, the, these, uh, all of these uh, green vertices, they are neighbors of both vertices and U. Okay, so these are like the, yeah, the common neighbors. And the property here that's used is that uh, any R click, as long as R is not too large, can be extended 
in many ways. Okay, so, so if we choose a, a U, a subset of U, which is not too large, it has many common neighbors. So this property is enough to prove uh, tree-like resolution lower bounds. Um, so again, you have these two, two uh, lemmas. And, but it's, it's not enough to prove lower bounds for stronger proof systems. And so I yeah, can show um, why. So a K minus one completes, uh, by, uh, complete by type graph. It's, uh, it's easy to say it doesn't, it, to see it doesn't contain the K click and yet it does satisfy this property. Um, because if I choose any, uh, any small enough U, it will have many, even more than the random graph uh, common neighbors. So, so this property is not enough. Okay, I'm gonna skip uh, some other um, properties, which is used for proving um, lower bounds for stronger, uh, for regular resolution. And, uh, and this other property, it's, it's interesting in the sense that uh, it's not satisfied by the K minus one part type graph. So it's a potential of actually um, being a property that can be used to prove stronger lower bounds. Okay. Okay, so just, yeah. Uh, so wrapping up, so we saw, yeah, average case proof complexity of these three and key hard problems. Uh, we're uh, usually interested in the size of the proofs, although width or degree lower bounds are also interesting. And these um, proof lower bounds imply lower bounds for algorithms. Um, yeah, I didn't say like for resolution lower bounds implies um, lower bounds for SAT solvers that are based on resolution. These are good candidate hard instances for strong proof systems. And we don't have so many good candidates, so they're interesting to study. And the lower bounds uh, often they boil down to identifying some structure and randomness that can be used to prove these lower bounds. Uh, and there are many open problems that we don't know how to solve. So yeah, that's it. Thanks. Thanks for that. That was a super interesting talk. Are there any questions either here in Berkeley or over Zoom? I, yeah, th thanks for the talk. Very interesting. Um, I wanted to ask, so we heard in one of the previous talks about this possibility that maybe, uh, so specifically in that case, low degree algorithms are equivalent to uh, some of squares. So kind of translating that to this context, is there any possibility that even though these have some strict orderings kind of in general, in the worst case, these proof systems, uh, that for some large class maybe of uh, random problems, uh, some of them might be equivalent. Uh, maybe for example, one kind of natural possibility would be polynomial calculus and some of squares, which are already kind of similar. Mm -hmm. That they would be equivalent for, uh, let's say, uh, random KSAT or something. Right, like or, or for some, you know, nat natural distributions over, let's say, maybe some class of CSPs or, or, or something mm -hmm. like that. Mm -hmm. Um, I think there's definitely that, that possibility. I, I don't know how to distinguish that from, uh, yeah, if these problems are hard for both proof systems, then I guess the proof systems would be performing equally badly on both of them. Um, so, and I think this is for several of these hard problems, this is believed to be the case. So in this sense, they would be equivalent, yes, in, the, in this average case scenario for hard problems. Um, there, are, there are some results too. Um, yeah, I, I, I won't remember right now, but I think there are also other results of classes of uh, problems that are actually equivalent between proof systems. So yeah, definitely. And so relatedly, actually, I mean, we expect this entire picture to be red, right, when the story is over, except for these easy squares on the, for, for a 3XOR. Yes, exactly. Right. Okay, okay. Yes, yes. Any more questions? 
Yeah, we have one more over here. Uh, so I'd like I'd like to ask. So I think I'm, I'm wondering you're being uh, being slides for for Cape Clique. Okay, you, you had a potential region where where Clique is uh, is algorithmically hard but is easy to prove. I guess is is is, is that uh, there any any known instances in that region? I no, I don't think so. I I don't know of any, and I and I don't uh, think there's there's anything known. So I think it's a uh, it's an interesting problem. Yeah. Definitely. I wanted to ask a similar question, but uh -huh. with more freedom. If, is there any natural problem on what's that's the case where it's hard to find a proof, but there are the short proofs that are hard to find? Yes, yes. Uh, there's um, So there's a um, recent uh, result showing that uh, resolution is not automatable. So what it means is that there are problems which have short resolution proofs, but these proofs cannot be found in polynomial time unless p equals n p. Oh. So this this is definitely the case. So um, are these natural problems, or are they constructed for? I mean, okay, it's not a real definition natural. But... Yeah, but they, they are they are so the the problem uh, is actually saying that uh, some formula has uh, small resolution refutation. So you can encode this as a CNF formula. It says that some formula has a small resolution refutation. And, uh, and in some cases, there will be a, a small refutation of this, but finding it uh, will, okay, so whenever the formula is satisfiable, there will be a small refutation of this, but finding it would imply that you found the satisfying assignment. So, and this is this uh, is hard. So it's yeah, it's it's kind of made for for this. So um, yeah, I don't know of other combinatorial formulas where where this is the case. And so it's 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 a uh, it's sort of rumored to happen actually also for simple things like random random three sets. Like there's um, wait, is it random three set? Which yeah, it's sat right. Like uh, fight. So there's this end of the one point five. Clause density thing for refuting three sat, uh, you know, with some of squares or spectral methods or whatever. But mm -hmm. then there's this work by Feige, Kim, and Ofek, which says that if you have only n to the 1.4 random clauses, there is a short refutation. We just don't think you can find that refutation efficiently. Right. That's a good example. Yeah. Yeah. That's a very good example. Yeah. That's a more natural. I see. Yeah. I mean, but that's, you know, you're not getting like worst case complexity theoretic evidence there. Like we, as far as we know, there could be an algorithm at end of the right. one point four. We don't have, you know, complexity reductions to rule that out, but it's like uh, uh, so it's potential. A, different, a different kind of example, right? Yeah, yeah. I see. But so when we do this quiet plan things to try to argue in a much weaker sense that things are hard to refute, uh, there could very well be a short proof that doesn't. Yeah. Yeah. Okay. Yeah, there could there could be, but for example, the sum of squares one, they're actually ruling out small degree proofs. It's not only algorithmically. So sometimes the way you prove the algorithmic result is actually uh, proof lower bounds. But you could potentially only prove an algorithmically lower, algorithmic lower bound. I see. I see. Interesting. Okay. Any more questions? No, if not, let's thank Suzanne again. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you.